Hello, I'm Dr. Mary Ann Teitelbaum, and today I'm going to teach you about the gallbladder. You might think, why am I devoting a whole video just talking about the gallbladder? Because it's just a small pouch that holds bile. It seems quite insignificant, unlike the heart or the brain or many other organs and glands, but in fact, no one seems to write too much about it at all, about any of its effects on our health. I hope this video changes your opinion about this somewhat ignored little vessel because on the other hand it plays a huge role in the human physiology, most of which goes unnoticed. And because these symptoms go unnoticed, many doctors and patients alike end up unnecessarily chasing these symptoms around the body while the underlying cause, the disruption of normal gallbladder function is often overlooked. So let's take a look at what the gallbladder is, what it does, and what happens when it doesn't work well. The gallbladder is a small pear-shaped vessel, just about three or four inches long, and it holds bile that the liver makes. When you eat food, it squirts that bile into the duodenum, and it releases bile about 10 to 12 times a day, so that by the end of the day, it has squirted about a quart of bile. So we're not talking about a small amount here. The bile has huge effects in the whole body. It's a whole quart you're releasing every day. Now, the bile has two liquids in it that emulsify fats. That means it melts them down into very small particles for absorption into your bloodstream. Kind of like if you had a greasy pot, you need to wash off the fat with detergent or that layer of grease will just remain. The same thing happens inside our bodies. We need that bile to break down the fats that we eat to help us digest and absorb them into our bodies. And also absorb the fat-soluble vitamins, which are vitamins A, D, E, and K. They're made out of fats. And the bile breaks down the fat-soluble environmental toxins from the air pollution, pesticides, and so on, so they can be removed from the body. And finally, the hormone estrogen needs to be broken down so it doesn't hang around and create dangerous growths. Remember, estrogen is made out of cholesterol and the bile is needed to emulsify this fatty hormone to help remove it from the body. So, if the bile doesn't flow well, then your fat-soluble vitamins might become low. This could explain why some people who work out in the sun all day continue to have low levels of vitamin D. Also, lack of bile flow is the underlying root cause in the vast majority of people who have high cholesterol. Yet, the doctors miss their mark, and they routinely give statin drugs, which cause lots of liver damage. They also cause their fair share of dementia due to the fact that the brain needs a constant supply of cholesterol in order to function properly. The statins also cause a lot of leg pain as that chemical can infiltrate into the leg muscles, making it really difficult to walk. I've seen that in a lot of my patients. And I've also seen many people develop neuropathy as the nerve cells in their hands and their feet starve to death from lack of cholesterol, which they also need to function. So cholesterol's not as bad as we think it is. We, the body needs it all over the place. So if the bile doesn't flow, the estrogen keeps reabsorbing back into your bloodstream as it sits stagnating in the bile, creating a situation we call high estrogen, low progesterone. I see this in a lot of people. Estrogen makes things grow. Therefore, you run the risk of developing fibroid tumors, uterine polyps, cysts on the breasts and ovaries, even nodules on the thyroid. So many people have these. And high estrogen can even cause breast cancer as well. So, estrogen also builds up in the uterine lining, which is called the endometrium. This is what you shed every month when you have your menstrual cycle. See, so, if you're not pregnant and you have a menstrual cycle, then you could develop very heavy menstrual cycles, mid-cycle bleeding, or menstrual um, cycles that never go away. I've seen so many women that it's lasting two, three, four weeks. That could be dangerous. You could become very anemic. Lack of bile flow can also create acid reflux, believe it or not. This is because when you eat, the food first goes into your stomach. 
where it churns into a liquid acid from all the hydrochloric acid that's in the stomach. Then it squirts out into the duodenum. The duodenum is the beginning of the very long journey the food's now going to make through the small and the large intestines before it comes out the other end as a bowel movement. Now, once the acids are dumped into and out of the stomach and into the duodenum, a signal is sent to the gallbladder right away to squirt out the bile, which both alkalinizes the gut and moves the food downward through the intestines by creating what's called peristalsis, which are little muscular contractions in the smooth muscle walls of the intestines. So if the bile becomes too thick and it doesn't flow, these acids aren't neutralized, and then they move up into the esophagus, creating acid reflux, which, again, is usually treated incorrectly by giving proton pump inhibitors or those acid reflux medicines. So now you feel worse because you have no bile flow, no stomach acid, making it just about impossible for digestion to occur. The bile also gives you the urge to move your bowel, so when it doesn't flow, you can become very constipated. Modern medicine prescribes laxatives. The holistic doctors prescribe magnesium and herbal laxatives, like Senna, Cascara Sagrada, which are just as addicting as their pharmaceutical cousins. So it's best to give the herbal formulas designated to stimulate the flow of bile out of the gallbladder, which in turn will stimulate a healthy bowel movement. This is way better than just giving laxatives. We want to get that bile out of there. That's what's causing the constipation. Always remember, go to the root cause of the problem. Now, you could become quite sick over time if these fat-soluble toxins from the environment continue to reabsorb back into your bloodstream instead of being carried out into the bowel movement every day due to lack of bile flow. And it's for this very reason I don't automatically take my new patients through a cleanse until I make sure they have proper bile flow or else they won't get very far in their detox programs. Lack of bile flow can also create acidity in the body. Many people nowadays discuss the importance of staying alkaline since so many health problems begin with acidity in the blood, which in turn creates inflammation. Everyone's talking about inflammation. It's at the root of heart disease, cancer, autoimmune diseases, but they don't really tell you where it's coming from or what to do about it, see? So we could trace it, just like the ancient doctors of India said, trace it all the way back to digestion with that lack of bile flow. There are so many versions of alkaline diets circulating on the internet, but you can have the most alkaline diet in the world, and if your bile isn't flowing, and you don't alkalinize the digestive juices as they pour out of the stomach, then all the other bodily fluids will remain acidic. This is because the digestive juices next, once they come out of the digestive tract, become the blood, and then from there they ultimately become things like urine, lymphatic fluids, tears, sweat, and all the other fluids circulating through the body's vast system of little microchannels. If the digestive juices aren't alkalinized right from the start, then all the body's fluids become too acidic. This is why lack of bile flow can cause osteoporosis, since the bones have to give up their calcium to keep the blood alkaline if it becomes too acidic. So you might ask, well, what creates sludge in the first place? For starters, eating and drinking cold food and foods and beverages can, since the cold causes the fats to congeal, and it thickens the bile. Kind of like when you put chicken soup in the refrigerator, the fats get real hard. Also, eating a diet too low in fiber. The soluble and the insoluble fibers found in fruits, vegetables, grains, whole grains, and legumes bind to the bile and they carry it out. They take it out in the bowel movement, causing the liver to make fresh, clean bile to replace it. But if there are too many refined foods in the diet, like the standard American diet, which relies heavily on white flour, white sugar, and other refined foods, and not enough fiber, the bile isn't taken out, and it just keeps reabsorbing back into the liver, along with all the toxins, the estrogen, the cholesterol, getting thicker and thicker each time it reabsorbs, creating bile sludge. 
Also, if we become too anxious and worried, we call it high vada in Ayurveda, then the energy known as apana vada, which resides in the lower intestines, which always has to be flowing downwards, can actually start moving up, slowing up the functioning of the entire digestive system, preventing the gallbladder from emptying on time. Apana always has to flow down, keep the digestive juices flowing down. So, Vada represents in nature the element of movement. It controls all the body's movements, like the movement of blood circulating through the arteries and veins, or the movement of food through the digestive tract. But too much rushing, stress, going to bed late, all these things can imbalance Vada, which wreaks havoc on the whole digestive system. We call this fight or flight here in the West. The digestive system comes to a grinding halt during fight or flight, and it's directing the blood away from your digestive organs in the center of the body, out to the periphery, out to the arms and legs, so you can run from the danger. This is why they have a saying in the Far East, to rest and digest. So the obvious question is, what can we do about this bile sludge? Well, the best thing is, try to prevent it from happening in the first place by eating and drinking warm cooked foods and sipping warm or hot beverages to melt the fat in the bile down. Don't rush as you go through the day. Don't give Vada that opportunity to move up. Eat plenty of fiber-rich foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and lentils. Don't eat the more clogging foods like hard-aged cheeses, peanut butter, almond butter, sunflower seed butter, tofu, red meats. They're clogging. You can have chicken, turkey, fish, lamb, soft curd cheeses like regatta cheese, fresh mozzarella, cottage cheese, and paneer. Also, please, please don't take birth control pills because the cholesterol in the pill thickens the bile. I've treated so many young girls through the years who have had lots of gallbladder problems develop as a result from taking the birth control pill because again, the birth control pill is made out of cholesterol. The female hormones are made out of cholesterol and it concentrates the bile too much. Also avoid taking little pearls of the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin E, or fish oil pearls, evening primrose oil. You're dumping too much fat into the gallbladder at one time. It's more than the bile can handle. It's okay to eat the fish, but then to take the fish oil pearls is too much of an insult to the gallbladder. Especially avoid cold smoothies, which everyone is doing when they're using frozen fruits, heavy fats like avocado oil, coconut oil in the smoothies. They're putting out the digestive fire and they're congealing those fats and they really run the risk of creating a bile sludge. If you want a smoothie, make a hot one. Let's see. Don't have them ice cold like that. You're going to put out your digestive fire. Avoid refined vegetable oils such as canola, sunflower, safflower, and many others, which form a plastic when you heat them. Just have ghee, which is the easiest to digest of all the fats and oils. You can have good quality olive oil and organic sesame oil. Coconut oil is way too cold, heavy, too waxy. should only be eaten if you live near the equator as the hot weather gives you more agni, or more of a digestive fire, we could call it, to burn up this heavy cold fat. The same is true with avocado oil. You can eat the coconut and eat the avocados, but don't have their oils. Now ghee has a very high smoking point of 485 degrees, <clears throat> but it's very easy to digest. It's just that we're not so familiar with ghee here in the West so it doesn't get so much publicity like avocado oil and coconut oil are getting. Eating cooked beets are the absolute best food for promoting the flow of bile out of the gallbladder. They thin it out and it squirts out. Carrots, apples, and artichokes are also great. There's lots of formulas in Ayurveda like triphala, harataki, which can promote bile flow as well. Even some spices like fenugreek seeds and turmeric are great for bile flow. Neem and Indian sarsaparilla are the best herbs for the digestion of fats. See, all these could help you if you're having gallbladder problems. 
but you'll have to work with your Ayurvedic practitioner to come up with the right combination for you since some of these, especially the fenugreek seeds and the neem, are a little heating. So if you have a lot of heat in your physiology, too much pitta, they might start to bother you. In my book, Healing the Thyroid with Ayurveda, I discuss how when the thyroid doesn't work properly, the gallbladder function goes down at the same time. And this is because the thyroid acupuncture meridian feeds directly into the gallbladder meridian. So when the thyroid's weak, the gallbladder's immediately weak. This is why so many people that I see have this combination of thyroid gallbladder. So people who have thyroid problems also seem to have other symptoms like constipation, acid reflux, fibroid tumors, thyroid nodules, other growths around the body like in the ovaries and breasts, as well as osteoporosis. In my book, I have a whole chapter devoted to the gallbladder, and I even discuss how to manually release it with the bile. It's not that hard to do. So I hope this video sheds some light on the important role the gallbladder plays in your health. If you can thin out your bile sludge, which is easy to do, by the way, you'll prevent gallstones and gallbladder disease from occurring. I have literally helped thousands of patients prevent gallbladder disease. And if you've already had your gallbladder removed, you still have to thin out the bile because it's still too thick. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as I think it's very important for everyone to keep up with the health of their gallbladder. And by doing so, you can prevent a whole host of health problems, which I've outlined here. Thank you.